Hello and welcome everyone. To those who have gathered here with us today and to those who are joining us via live stream. I am Diane Tran, I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the System Executive Director for Community Health Equity and Engagement at mHealth Fairview. And I also lead the mHealth Fairview Center for Community Health Equity, and I'm so grateful to share this moment with you as we mark the official opening of the Fairview Community Health and Wellness Hub. I want to extend a special welcome to some of the local leaders who have joined us here today, and I'll humbly apologize in advance for inadvertently leaving anyone off the list. I'd like to thank Rebecca Naker from the St. Paul City Council, as well as other leaders from the Fairview Board of Directors, the University of Minnesota, the Minnesota Department of Health, the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet, the African American Leadership Council, St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health, St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce, the City of St. Paul, Minnesota Community Care, Fairview Foundation Board, the Minnesota Senate, and the Hmong American Partnership, amongst a host of other community partners. The mission of serving the dear neighbor without distinction led to the founding of St. Joseph's Hospital nearly 170 years ago. And today we are grateful in this same spirit to embark upon a new way of bringing healers and patients and families together to co-create health and well-being. We have a robust program today, and I'll be walking us through each step. As we gather today, we recognize that hospitals are the setting of some of the most important events of our lives. I'm personally grateful for the amazing care I received in the maternity ward when I delivered my firstborn son here in 2017. As part of the transition, we have taken care to facilitate conversations early this summer with current and former employees and community members to allow for the processing of understandable grief and loss that comes with change and to honor the stories and gifts made possible here by the commitment to caring and serving. Too often, we look ahead excitedly to the future without recognizing the past. There's a saying that institutions never remember and communities never forget. Our community is a key partner here in our commitment to addressing the social determinants of health and advancing health equity. So we wanna make sure that we are grounded with clarity and reverence in how we've arrived here today. In that spirit, I'd like to begin by introducing Heather Fahey, a pharmacist in our system and member of the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinty, who recently worked on a system committee to prepare and dedicate a native land acknowledgement for the land on which we stand today. Heather, we are honored to have you here with us for the inaugural reading of this acknowledgement. Sego, Skenakoa, Heather Miracle Fahey Young Yats. I've just introduced myself in Gunyangeha, or Mohawk language. I'm a clinical pharmacist with M Health Fairview and have had the privilege of working with a diverse group of colleagues to thoughtfully and purposefully develop an indigenous land acknowledgement that recognizes and honors the past, present, and future. At the Fairview Community Health and Wellness Hub and the M Health Fairview Center for Community Health Equity, a collaboration of community partners will work to address inequities in our communities. This work includes acknowledging how historical and ongoing inequities have impacted the geographies and the people we serve. We hope the land acknowledgement will honor and recognize the indigenous communities who have stewarded this land since time immemorial, and that it shows our commitment to restorative action and making a positive impact in native communities. We are honored to have Why Treaties Matter exhibit on site today and to be hosting further Native education and engagement opportunities for our staff this fall, in addition to continuing our partnerships with local indigenous organizations and community groups. We acknowledge with respect and gratitude that the land on which we live is indigenous land. Minnesota Mokoche, Minnesota, is the homeland of the Dakota and Anishinaabe peoples and other native nations whose ancient relationships with the land continue to this day. We acknowledge that this sacred land does not belong to us. We are occupiers here who have also come to call this land where the water reflects the sky home. 
It is our understanding that Dakota has been translated to mean friend. We hope by acknowledging the land and the original stewards of this land that we may also extend our own friendship. We recognize that land acknowledgement is only a starting point. There is a complex history of genocide, broken treaties, including those of 1837 and 1851, and colonialism that has been concealed throughout history. We acknowledge the impacts of this history on the generations of the past and the generations of the future. While we cannot undo the wrongs and do not want to disguise the past, we must be forthright about the journey to today and thus take restorative action. We acknowledge that other communities have also been marginalized and exploited to generate the community's wealth, and we commit to develop an action plan outlining our future pursuits in partnership with the community to create and maintain health equity. In the process of launching the Fairview Community Health and Wellness Hub and the Center for Community Health Equity in downtown St. Paul, we hope to embrace the wisdom in planning for the next seven generations of this revered land. We commit to strengthening our relationships in our community as a healthcare provider, employer, academic institution, and community member. We will partner and lead with our indigenous and other marginalized neighbors in our efforts to care for current and future inhabitants of this land. Thank you, Heather, for your leadership. As we celebrate the repurposing of this space, we hope that this acknowledgement and the action that it catalyzes reflects our shared commitment to restorative action and the pursuit of equity. I'd now like to introduce James Hereford, President and CEO of Fairview Health Services. these masks are. Um, how about this? This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. It's incredible. Uh, it's exciting for me personally. It's exciting for our organization. Uh, it is truly a continuation of an unbroken timeline. So I talked to Sister Suzanne before I got up here. I mean, think about where we started. This was intended to be a school. And the sisters were responding to a community need, and they saw the need in the midst of a cholera outbreak as establishing the first hospital in the state of Minnesota. And that response to the community need has continued unbroken until now. And this is yet another step in that direction. And as Heather talked about, our opportunity to attend from a health and an equity perspective, using this as a center, right, a place, but not as the only place, but only a place where we can bring together these amazing resources to attend to the health of our community, to equity, to all the things that we care deeply about as Minnesotans. So as again, I look around the room and I see all these wonderful partners, people backstage who will be talking to you. It is so gratifying to be a part of this. To, be, to see the progress that we've made. This was a bunch of drawings on a whiteboard uh, in my office that Sister Suzanne and I were looking at with Trudy Trislin and a number of others. And to see this come to fruition is so exciting. I also wanna thank all the people who made this happen. You know, it, it is the privilege of the CEO to get up and make presentations like this. But I think everybody understands, maybe all too well, I don't have very much to do with this. We started down a direction and then a bunch of people rushed in and said, we're in. We're gonna make this happen. You met Diane Tran. She was one of the, the uh, most energetic, but hardly the only. There are innumerable staff who took this idea and made it real, who built partnerships, who built plans, who designed spaces that really symbolize, and now you see this, uh, as a manifestation of all that hard work, of all that vision. I want to thank them. And I see this as a starting point, not as an end point. 
We're celebrating a point in time, yes. We're celebrating a building. We're celebrating a set of partners. But this is the beginning of a concept, a different kind of concept. As a healthcare organization, we're deeply committed to serving the communities that we're in and to making sure we're attending to the health needs of those communities. And we fully recognize that what we do, as important as it is, in terms of responding to clinical needs, is a small part of responding to health needs. And this building and this set of services and this concept is about how do we be good community partners? Not to come tell people what to do, but to ask, to partner, to be a member of the community, and use these resources at this point in time and in, through the future to continue to evolve this offering to meet the community's needs. So that's what's so exciting about this. So again, I want to thank you all for being here. I see so many old friends and partners and uh, people who have contributed to St. Joseph's through the years. And I also want to thank the people who were part of the St. Joseph's Hospital for so long. This too was a critical part of the community. They contributed in so many ways. I swear to goodness, of, I talked to people, you know, there must have been at least 500,000 births because everybody I talked to says, oh, I was born at St. Joseph's. <laughs> but it goes to the impact that they've had on the community. And as we continue to evolve as a healthcare system, they've continued to evolve and move to the places where they can have the most impact, including here. So I want to thank them. I want to thank all of our partners, all of our people, and you especially for being here, for helping to celebrate this milestone. And I invite you in to continue to help us progress and evolve and respond to the many needs our communities have. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you, James for the visionary leadership that you display that has powered and enabled all of this work. Now, I'd like to invite Now, I'd like to invite Dr. Brooke Cunningham, Assistant Commissioner for the Health Equity Bureau at the Minnesota Department of Health to say a few words. Brooke was appointed to the role in 2022 by Commissioner Jan Malcolm and is responsible for overseeing the Center for Health Equity, the Office of American Indian Health, the COVID-19 Health Equity Team, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. She also works closely with leaders and staff in MDH's other bureaus to advance health equity in their work. Welcome, Dr. Cunningham. Good afternoon, everyone, even those of you up there. So thank you for the opportunity to speak at this opening. As was just mentioned, my name is Brooke Cunningham, and I'm the new Assistant Commissioner of Health Equity at the Minnesota Department of Health. At MDH, through the COVID pandemic, we have deepened our commitment to communities of color and to all Minnesotans who, due to their zip code, who they love, and their background, do not have the same opportunity to be healthy. It is in this spirit that I'm pleased to be here to join mHealth Fairview as they embark on their commitment to serve the urban core of St. Paul and to invest in a community hub focused on the many social, economic, and medical factors that affect a person's health. It's terrific to see healthcare under the same roof as food distribution and resources for seniors. It's great to see a community hub that will be a community resource and not simply a health system resource. I was introduced as Dr. Cunningham and I am a medical doctor, but I'm also a doctor of sociology, which is really important to me because I think it's important to remind folks that it takes both health care and healthy communities for us to achieve our best health. To address disparities, our healthcare needs to support and engage the whole patient, all their needs, their living conditions, such as a safe place to live, financial security, a sense of belonging, access to transportation, nutritious food, and a quality education. Part of supporting patients is supporting their communities. It is heartening to hear 
that Fairview is investing resources in this neighborhood and is going to engage with community partners and listen to those partners to create culturally responsive approaches and expand programs to serve St. Paul. I know this is just the start today. I am truly hopeful that this hub represents a willingness to go bold to advance health equity in new and exciting ways. The Minnesota Department of Health is also part of this downtown community with offices nearby. I walked over from my office across the highway. So as neighbors and fellow advocates for the health of all Minnesotans, we at MDH look forward to partnering with Fairview and its commitment to serve this community. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Cunningham, for your remarks and for modeling wellness personally. Your leadership is a personal inspiration for me, and we're eager to continue our valued partnerships with the Minnesota Department of Health, such as our mini community COVID and flu vaccination clinics, and form new collaborations with your office to address the social determinants of health and advance health equity. Next, I'm pleased to welcome Dustin Crawford, System Director of Spiritual Health Services and Associate Chaplain Mike Jinta to the stage for a blessing. Good afternoon, everyone. On Tuesday, I had the opportunity to gather upstairs in the chapel here with a small group of people and take part in a cleansing ritual. Together, we honored this place as it transitions from what it once has been to what it is now. We remembered and reflected on its legacy. This is a space that was founded in faith, and I believe we honored that. During the ritual, we honored the Catholic roots of St. Joseph Hospital and the sisters of St. Joseph of Crondelet, who followed their faith, their calling, and their mission to serve and heal the community, to love our neighbor without distinction. We believe the spirit of the mission to serve and heal will continue to bear fruit in the work the hub brings to this community and to our neighbors. The work will look different but the work will still take care of this community and those who live in it. And now Mike Genta, longtime chaplain of St. Joseph's will offer a blessing. In honor of a legacy of care and the ongoing work of healing that happens here, I offer this blessing. Let us take care of the children, for they have a long way to go. Let us take care of the elders, for they have come a long way. And let us take care of those in between, our neighbors, our communities, each other, ourselves, staff, for they are doing the work. May it be so. Thank you, Dustin and Mike, for grounding us with that beautiful blessing. Recognizing the rich diversity of faith traditions in St. Paul today, we'll build upon our shared values, carrying forward a spirit of service as we embark on this next chapter of health, healing, and equity. It's now my privilege to introduce Tony Sana, a longtime member of the community and founder of the Sane Foundation. Sane Foundation is a key partner of the Eastside Health and Wellbeing Collaborative, convened by Fairview for over seven years, and we're proud to have sponsored their soccer camps and gala for goals over the years. We are thrilled that since January of this past year, M Sane Foundation has been a partner at the Hub with their food distribution efforts. Welcome, Tony. I want to thank everyone that came here and um, apologize because James stole my speech. 
Um, but, it, you know, in the words that he said, it, it is remarkable, and there's a lot of great people that, that helped do this, and I want to start off by thanking John and his team and Brandon and our team that, you know, Brandon came to me and said, I got an idea, and I said, yeah, right. How are we going to put food in a, in a hospital? Um, but this just shows uh, the innovation and under the leadership at, at Fairview and Fairview that um, anything is possible. And instead of them coming and telling us what to do, they brought a number of partners together and say, what can we do? And, you know, it not only gives us the opportunity in our role in making communities healthier, but also forces all of us uh, to take responsibility in what a healthy community looks like. And so... Their, their foresight and ability to bring people together um, to come up with ideas created this, and we're just happy to be a part of it, and it really shows what happens when community comes together. And at the end of the day, we all are trying to make a community healthier for all of us, and health is at the root of community, and community is at the root of health. So we're honored to be a part of it. Um, thank you for having us, and I look forward to doing great things together in collaboration and partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Last, I'd like to introduce Brett Edelson, Chief Executive Officer of United Healthcare of Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota, which has made an important investment in the hub of $1 million to support, in turn, our investments in equity and in the community. Welcome, Brett. Thank you so much, Diane. Uh, first, a huge congratulations to Fairview. You took a really bold step and you made this commitment to St. Paul, and it's just wonderful to see this start, you know, this very beginning of the journey uh, with all of these supporters here today. Uh, United Healthcare has been honored to be a part of this journey. Uh, I think James, we first met on this quite a while ago, and we started to talk about what the vision was, and what I thought was really important at the time that Fairview had said, we really have to listen to the community, we have to honor what's already been at St. Joseph's, and find a different path forward. And to be a part of that and to see all the listening and really understanding what's going to benefit the community most, I think has been such a special part of the process. What I'm excited about, what United Healthcare is excited about, is this initial launch. And we know it's just the first step, but to see all of these fantastic community partners, these trusted community partners, to be able in the same place to provide services is really remarkable. Um, so the way that you know, kind of I've uh, seeing the vision is that uh, a patient, someone in, uh, who's seeking services for primary care, they come into Minnesota Community Care. And for them to not just be able to have that primary care visit, but then to have the social service screenings and have some of those needs be addressed on site uh, through the SUNA uh, Foundation and what they're doing through food distribution, through Ebenezer Senior Living and providing some of those enhanced day services. And then for those uh, who are in need of outpatient mental health and addiction services to be able to have all those needs addressed in one site is pretty remarkable. Uh, Unite Healthcare, in addition to the financial contribution, we've been really honored to be a part of the process of looking at the data of the community and maybe giving some different perspectives of some services that would be beneficial. Uh, collaborating uh, with these wonderful partners on the processes, on the handoffs, and how we can all work together. Uh, and then also uh, being a spokesperson or a, 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 another outlet to make some introductions to other large employers that we have relationships with to bring in even more support for the hub. So on behalf of our 20,000 employees uh, who will live and work in Minnesota, thank you for allowing us to be a part of the journey, and we're excited to see where it goes next. Thank you, Brett, for your generosity and partnership. This concludes our formal program remarks today. Thank you again for taking the time to be in this moment with us, to honor the decades of health and healing that have taken place in this space, and to celebrate the establishment of the Fairview Community Health and Wellness Hub. For those on site or visiting this afternoon, we hope you'll take time to participate in our open house activities, connecting with other community partners, and meeting representatives from the programs and services that are here to serve the St. Paul community and beyond. In fact, you'll have a chance to dive right in for a speed volunteering opportunity today at 1 p.m. to pack boxes with the Sandy Foundation. Volunteers interested in participating should gather over by that sign that says, Improving Food Access. 
Now, I'd like to invite our speakers and special guests over to the stairwell, where we will officially open the hub with a ribbon cutting. Thank you all for being on this journey with us as we honor the legacy of this space and build together a shared vision with and for our community.